Hello, I am Channa Vankapur. I am going to discuss my solution to the lead code problem, minimum height trees. It's uh, today's problem in the November lead coding challenge. It's an interesting problem uh, which uh, uses some graph properties and also uh, the solution requires DFS traversal. Right, so uh, it starts with the definition of tree, tree being uh, a general tree in, 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 in that case, it's an, uh, it's an unrooted tree. There is no concept of root there. So one way of defining a tree is it's an undirected graph with uh, in which actually any two vertices are connected by exactly one path. And another way of defining that is uh, uh, any connected graph without any simple simple cycles. Actually, there's one more way of defining this is uh, uh, a connected graph with exactly n minus one edges, right? So all these actually define uh, a tree, an unrooted tree. So that's why you, uh, you can make any node as the tree here. Uh, so that, that's why there are n possible trees you can actually make with each of them being the root. So what they're asking here is, uh, among all those trees, find the trees which has the minimum height, right? So minimum height is going to be a unique value, but the the trees there could be more than one trees having that height, all right? So in this example, uh, there are four nodes, uh, and obviously there are four rooted trees you can make. And if you see the heights of each of them, uh, it's it's two, one, two, two. So one is the minimum height, and there is only one of that. So we are going to return that 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 tree uh, because each uh, tree is basically identified by the root of that. So we're just returning the index of the root. And indices of the roots are from zero to n minus one. <clears throat> so in this example, um, so uh, there are six vertices and uh, uh, these are the two trees which has minimum height. If you, and any other four trees, if you consider, they have more height than this. So these two have a height of two and that's why the answer is three comma four. All right. Uh, so one way of solving this one is a brute force way of solving this one is um, run DFS on on each node. That's how find the height of the tree uh, rooted at that node. Uh, so we are going to have like n DFS searches uh, from scratch and find the minimum height among them and figure out which trees has as that height and that's going to be the answer. It works. It's not very complicated. The code is going to be extremely simple. Um, but the thing is, look at look at n here, the constant. n is uh, more than 10 power 4. And that's why the algorithm is going to be big of n squared in our case. So why big of n squared is a, a DFS traversal. Um, generally, it takes big of n plus number of edges. But here, number of edges is also n minus 1. So that's why we can say a DFS traversal is just big of n. That's a good part. But the thing is, we're going to have n DFS traversals. That's why it's going to be big of n squared. And big of n squared of uh, n being more than 10 power 4 is generally crosses the time limit, right? So let's see if we can do it faster than that. All right, so I'm thinking of, uh, can we run uh, once DF DFS once from any arbitrary vertex, say, starting with 0, and uh, reuse that? So if you just look at this example here, we have a DFS, uh, if you run DFS from 3, the heights of each of those trees is going to be 0, 0, 0. Uh, one zero here and then two here. So this is what we are going to get. So now, uh, do we have to run DFS uh, again on other uh, roads? What if we run on, uh, on zero? So this is what we are going to get. Zero is going to be here. And uh, so there is only one uh, no, neighbor of that, which is going to be three. And three is going to have, uh, say, one, two, and four. Um, and four is going to have five. So now, because zero does not have anything else, the height of this tree is going to be three. And this, we don't have to run DFS to figure this out. Because we know that the height of the root uh, tree rooted at three is two, not because of zero, not because of this subtree. It's because of some other subtree, because the other subtree starting with four is, is has a height of one, and this has zero. So because this height is still going to be unchanged, which is two, and the height of uh, zero is going to be uh, is going to be three, which is one more than a height of uh, uh, three because three is going to be a sub subtree of, of zero. That's why uh, starting with the rooted at one or two are actually are going to have the same result. So that's why there is no point in actually running DFS on them. All right. So uh, that's why there, the, the only option left out is what if what about the DFS uh, or whatever the what about the tree rooted at four? 
right? So now if you go for go to four, actually that's what we have in the right side here. So the height is two here and then zero here and and one here and zero zero zero. But do we have to you know find this by running another DFS? It turns out actually we don't have to. Uh, look at this. Actually, I don't need all the answers here. Uh, for five, we already have zero, and that is going to be the answer because that is um, somewhere down the four. That's not going to change. And for uh, three, what happens is so among the, the the remaining, there are remaining uh, three of them. So in in this case, all of them has the same height. But uh, just consider one of them which has the maximum uh, height except the max, right? It's like the second max uh, height subtree. In this case, that is zero. And uh, so now when, when three becomes a, a, a neighbor of four, that means a child of four in this uh, in this tree, obviously the height of the uh, subtree starting at uh, rooted at uh, three cannot go through four. So that two is not gonna help. Uh, whatever this second max height, which is zero, so zero plus one. So now one of these is gonna define what is there. This is zero, so zero plus one is gonna be one, right? So that's how we don't have to again um, uh, run DFS again to even to, fi to find the height of uh, tree rooted at four. But in this case, uh, we got both of them as two, right? Uh, do we have to go further? If you if you look at as in if you start with four, it looks like I should go towards three because three is the one which is longest. There is one. There are only two subtrees rooted at four. Uh, one is a, uh, with, has a height of four, zero. Another one has a height of one. So we should go towards that, and then we are going back to this three. So instead of going back and forth, here, at least in this case, we realize that um, the max height of a subtree is one in this case, uh, and the second max is zero, which is the difference is only one. And because of that, when we make four as the root, the height of this one is going to be same as what was the height of four when three was the root. So that's why they are going back and forth, right? So if you get to this scenario, there are two minimum trees or two, two minimum height trees. Uh, one of them is the one with here and another one is the the, the subtree with uh, with max height. So what is the case when the second max has a height one lesser than that, right? That is the scenario, right? So when do we have only one solution? Actually, we have an example at the top, but let's, let's just make, modify this a little bit and then figure out when do we get that. Suppose there is a child of zero, which is uh, more like you know seven, sorry, six. There are, so in this case, n equal to seven, right? In this case, uh, the height of this subtree is instead of zero, it is gonna be one, right? Everything else is not gonna change. So in this case, look at, look at this, what happens. So in, on the left side, I have one more uh, child of zero, which is gonna be uh, and a zero in this case, right? So, uh, if if I have first figured out with the with uh, ran DFS on, on on this tree rooted at three, we have this answer where there are two subtrees with the same height. If there are two subtrees with the same height, we already know that the ones with lesser height, like you know, rooted at one and two, are going to be useless anyway, right? Because they are going to increase the height by more than that two, it's going to be three, so it is useless. But if you go either to four or zero, what happens? If you go to zero, uh, the on the left hand side we we see here the height is still increasing. Why? Because now the height of three is either by by rooted, uh, because there are two subtrees with the max height, it can be either of them. If you if you go towards zero, if you make zero as the root, then still four is gonna define the height. So the height is not gonna change, it is still two. Because the height of the uh, uh, tree rooted at three uh, is, or actually sub, sub tree rooted at three is still two, uh, with, with the root, uh, it's gonna be three. Right, so which is more? That's why this is not a good option. We don't want to come here. It's not going to be min height. If you go towards four, this uh, the scenario is exactly same because we are going to have a child of zero, which is going to be six here. That's why the height of this one is going to be one, and height of three is going to be two, and height of four is going to be three. So that's why in in this case, if you observe, uh, ro rooted uh, a tree rooted at three is the only option we have, because in in any way you go the height is going to increase, right? So that's why this is a scenario where if uh, if you if there are two or more subtrees with the same max height, then uh, this is the only, uh, you know, answer. This is the only tree uh, which has minimum height, right? So, and uh, so with this idea, I think we, f we can figure out uh, the answer has uh, either one minimum, minimum height tree or two minimum height trees. That cannot be anything other than that. 
right so that's why with with one dfs traversal and then processing on top of it we should be able to find it and whatever the processing we figured out let's actually see that in the code in little detailed way and see if uh, that that actually doesn't take much time all right let me go to code and then see what happens right it, it's a little complicated in a way so let's see whether the code is going to clarify any any doubts you have all right so i'm handling trivial cases of n equal to 0 and 1 because sorry 1 and uh, 0 and 1 so n equal to 0 means uh, sorry n equal to 0 cannot be a case uh, n is at least 1 so if n is 1 that means there is only one node and that has to be answered because the height of such a tree is 0 and if if n equal to 2 then there are only two nodes so to make it connected there has to be an edge between them so height of either trees is going to be 1 and uh, that's why both of them are going to be in the answer so i'm returning there so n equal to 3 onwards are little more general cases all right so i'm i'm constructing the graph here in the adjacency list representation uh, the representation essentially means uh, uh, starting with every vertex we are going to have all the neighbors of that and because it's undirected edges for every edge we have two entries here right starting with either end of uh, end of the vertex or end of the edge all right so uh, now let's see what happens here so in this case i am finding uh, heights a uh, height of the tree uh, rooted at zero but along with that i'm going to find heights of all the subtrees when zero is the root right so this is what i'm doing and, and this is a simple uh, dfs uh, traversal so find height is basically the the, the method we, we you can see here so in this case i have graph as input and u is the vertex i'm running dfs from and i have parent of whatever we are calling initially i call with minus one minus one is not a valid parent because the root does not have a parent and then heights is basically a vector of uh, heights of all the um, you know uh, all the vertices so i'm going to find the max height of uh, a subtree right so heights of all the subtrees i'm going to find uh, so here look at this i'm excluding the parent here because that is the only possibility of a kind of a cycle for us because of you know underrated graph here uh, even parent is also a neighbor of that so i don't want to process that i'm skipping it right and uh, so otherwise any other vertices are not going to create a cycle anyway so uh, i'm going to find the height of uh, such a subtree um, and uh, and then the parent here look at this i'm passing u as the parent so that you know parent can be avoided and then i find the height i keep track of the max height that means the max of heights of all the subtrees so the height of the current tree is going to be one more than that so that's why max height plus one all right so that's the simple dfs way of doing it because it's a it's a it's a it's an acyclic graph clearly where i don't need to keep track of whether i visited a vertex or not all right so now look at uh, this one what we are doing after that so this is the main logic in a way it's a little complicated to explain or maybe i haven't uh, done it very neatly so let's see what happens here um, so what i'm trying to do here is as long as i don't have an answer i'm going to keep doing uh, running through this while loop uh, because i'm i'm pretty i'm, I'm uh, it is guaranteed that there is a solution i'm going to find it so what I want to find out here is starting with the vertex u equal to zero, we would like to find the the two vertices which has the max height, right? Max one and max two. So in this case, uh, what how do I do that is I, I run through every adjacent vertex of that, and because we already know the heights of them, and if uh, max one is minus two minus two indicates it is not at uh, found out, that means if there are if this is the first one first child, um, or first neighbor. So in this case, I'm going to uh, set max one as the uh, height of that vertex v. If max one is already found, then we see that whether this height of v is more than or greater than or equal to max one, because even if it is equal, I want to make this one as this is max one as so that you know the whatever we had as, as max two. Either way, it is fine. So I'm going to make uh, uh, the current max one as max two. Again, I'm kind of pushing it, and then uh, the whatever we have right now v is going to be max one. If max two is, uh, so in, in the other case, if this is not true, that means the, the current one should be competing for max two. So if max two is not at found or the current vertex has more height than the max two, then this is gonna make it to max two. So essentially we are gonna find max one and max two in terms of heights of the subtrees. If both heights are same, as we already seen, if there are two or more subtrees with the same height, uh, then the current tree is the only option. That is the minimum tree, minimum height tree. So I'm going to uh, add it to the result. So otherwise, uh, if the heights of the the uh, subtrees with the maximum height is one more than 
that of the second maximum, then we have two solutions. It's going to be back and forth as we explained earlier. So in that case, the current uh, 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 root is also an answer and the max one vertex, because if you go there, uh, it's going to be the similar scenario and current vertex is going to be max one vertex there. So these are the two possible answers. So I'm going to push them. Otherwise, I need to go towards it towards, you know, finding more. So if, if the if the difference of max height of uh, max, if max one is uh, at least you know, two more than of max two, then I need to go to uh, that kind of vertex. And obviously, we are kind of balancing there. So current, definitely the current vertex is not an answer. So we are moving towards there. So in that case, the height of the current vertex also needs to be updated in a way because we are moving there. Um, if there are no other children, that, that is kind of you know indicated by max to being minus two. In that case, the height of the uh, this subtree, this uh, resulting subtree with u is going to be zero. Otherwise, uh, whatever max two uh, we have, it's going to be one more than that because that is going to define the height of the subtree starting with u, right? When we make max one vertex as the root. So we are making max one vertex as the root here, and then we continue in the while loop, right? So uh, so because we know that this answer is going to be either this or this, uh, one of these two possibilities, uh, it's this option is not taking us for a ride in terms of an infinite loop or something, right? So this should work. Uh, I have seen this working already. Let me submit once again and then show it to you, right? So it, it accepted. And uh, if you want to see the time complexity of uh, this one, it runs pretty fast in terms of you know uh, even the bigger time big off time complexity. So uh, here we are we are we have a graph here which is so this this first loop is going to take big off n time where we are constructing the graph. So this one is big off n, and uh, finding height is also big off n because we figured out uh, the DFS in this case is big off n because the number of edges is also n minus one, and if you figure out what happens after this. Um, so even though we are, uh, we this loop can run from, uh, we are not going to go back to a same vertex once again. We go in only one of the directions, right? Starting with you. Uh, and inside here, we we basically process every, uh, you know, neighbor of that. So this looks like a little expensive one, but if you look at here, even if you process for every vertex U, right? Each, so if U is a vertex, like if, if you go through every possible vertex, and if you, you are processing all the neighbors of that, that means you are processing each edge once overall. So you know that the number of edges is also n minus one. So overall, even though we have a while loop and a for loop inside here, the whole the complexity of this whole thing is going to be big of n, which is number of vertices, right? Also number of edges, which is n minus one in this case, right? So that's why this is going to work in linear time, and that that means it that should be uh, visible in in our time complexity. Right. Let me see how much time it took. So it took about 120 milliseconds, which is pretty good in terms of you know 90 percentile here. So that means this is one of the best solution, right? So if there is any other way of solving this problem, uh, maybe this is the first solution that came to my mind and I just coded it. But if there is any better way of so solving this one, let me know in the comments. Or if, you, if there are any questions, uh, you know, bring it up. Uh, otherwise, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, you know thanks for watching